Good morning, Alec. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, Melanie. Um, okay, so a week from Friday, your formal research summary is due to UT. We are submitting it on Friday, October 9th, if not the day before. So in order to get this paper in shape, we got to write it. And that's what you're going to spend today doing. You will turn in everything you have to me at the end of class on Friday. Okay, so you have today to write it, you have tomorrow to work on it, and you'll have class time on Friday. And then you're turning it in, whether or not you're done. You're submitting it to me, so I have the weekend to look over it. Okay, so let's talk about what exactly it is you have to do, that way you guys can get started. You are going to go into Canvas, and you're gonna to go to 2.3, point one, which is the research summary. So when you go to 2.3.1, you'll go into Canvas. It looks like this. You'll go to modules, which gives you your table of contents. You will scroll down past module one, all the way to module two, and you will come to 2.3.1, Research Summary to High School Upload. When you click this, the assignment will come up. You need to read all of this. Okay, it says Assignment Prompt. You will pull this up and you've got all of this information on what it is you're supposed to do. You need to read all of it and make sure that you include all of it in the summary that you are going to submit. UT is expecting all of it and is expecting all of it to be done well. So I hope you've heard me say all of it and that you need to read that section. Here are some things to keep in mind. You need to pay attention to the formatting. That is the way the text looks on the paper. You need to use in-text attributions. That means as you are writing your paper, you need to use parentheses. And from our works cited discussion last class, um, I hope that you guys figured out that what the word you use in the parentheses is often the author's last name because what we want that to do is correspond to the works cited page which is a list of all your sources for this paper you will have one source so your works cited page will be one source but in a um, larger paper which we will write further on into the semester you'll have multiple sources and you'll list them by their last name. If a name isn't available, you'll go to the next thing, which would be the title of the article. If that isn't available, you'll go to the next thing, which is like the container where it was published. Is it in a book? Is it in a newspaper? Okay, but that's where it starts is with the last name, then the name of the article, and then the container. And so when you're referencing that inside the text, you want to tell the reader exactly where to go to to find that source in your work cited. And so you're going to list the first thing they would see in the work cited, which is usually the last name. That's why you do last name, comma. And then for this, you're going to list the paragraph number where you found this information in your source. OK. Here's what the paper outline looks like. You're going to introduce the controversy. Why are we talking about this? You're going to introduce the writer or the speaker and explain why they are a stakeholder. And then you're going to give a thorough summary of the source itself. You can use play by play. You can use argument breakdown. You can use some combination of those two, but it needs to be thorough. For the play-by-play -play and argument breakdown summaries that you guys did in class, you gave, you, you showed me, you understood how those worked. You want to be extremely 
thorough. I'm talking about a lot more writing. You're going to fill a whole paper up with everything that the source is talking about. OK, so what you did, those paragraphs aren't going to be enough. You're going to have to do even more. Here are some things that might help you. Oh, I'll say when it's due. It's due at the end of class on Friday, which I said at the beginning of this class. If you feel like you're not done, you are still submitting to me everything you've got done at the end of class on Friday. Whatever that is, that is what you're submitting to me. If you want to keep a copy for yourself and continue to work on it over the weekend, feel free. Because what I'm doing with what you turn in on Friday is I'm looking at it, editing it, talking to you about it, because you're going to rewrite it next week. And it is due to UT a week from Friday. So if you're like, not this Friday, next Friday. I'm sorry, let me rephrase. You are turning in everything to me this Friday. It is due to UT next Friday, okay? We are about a week and a half out from when you are submitting this. So you're turning in everything to me this Friday that you have. Okay, do you need some help? Do you need to know where to go to figure out how to do this? Well, go look at the play-by-play -play summary. That is 1.2.4 in Canvas. Or look at the argument breakdown summary. That's 1.2.5. Or look at the student example, the one that you guys graded, that's 1.2.6. If you're not sure how to document the sources with the in-text citations, 1.3.4. Or you can go to Purdue Owl, which is linked on here. I have already uploaded these slides into Google Classroom. So you can go to this and you can click Purdue Owl and it'll take you right to that um, page. Okay, so does anybody have any questions for me? I see a couple of stuff in the chat box. So Kijana, you want to stay. You do not want to leave class, you want to stay, and you wanna talk with me about what you don't understand, all right? And you and I will work together to get you to understand that. Megan, if you're in the same boat, you want to do the same thing, okay? Because we are at the moment where we're about to submit to UT, and that's going to be 10% of your grade for college. So if you are lost, if you do not understand what's going on, yeah, everybody can stay, Crystal. If you feel like um, you have not been able to complete the work so far that has been leading up to this, you, you're in trouble, <laughs> you need to stay with me today so that you can get back on track because we are, I mean, UT will not move its deadline. That is the deadline, that is when we are submitting it. Okay, so again, your job today for the rest of class is to write this formal research summary, period. That's it. Um, so you need to go to 2.3.1 in Canvas, read the instructions, and get busy writing. I will be on here for the rest of class. If you have questions, come back. Um, I'm actually going to start at the beginning with my friends who are lost and walk them through everything. So if you don't need to hear that, if you feel like you understand what's going on and you just need to get busy writing, go. Get busy writing. One more thing. You are doing this on one stakeholder article. I had you submit two to me. You are picking one and writing it, okay? If you only had one article approved, use that article. If you had both approved, pick one, okay? But this isn't a whole both sides look at the controversy. This is an in-depth look at one stakeholder. Okay, I'm going to stop talking and take questions if you have them. I'm trying to check something real fast in focus, so I'll tell you in a second. Okay, if nobody else has any questions, you guys can go and start working. 
if you are confused and you need me to walk you through the whole process, stay. Okay. What's the model number again? It is 2.3.1. That's what you're asking, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so the first thing I want everybody to do is I want you to get into Canvas. All right, get into Canvas, go to your dashboard, and let's go to Intro to Rhetoric, which is our high school class. Maybe the first thing I want you to do is to take a deep breath, okay? If you do yoga breathing like me, I need you to breathe it all in. And then let it all out. Yes, I will put the link to 2.3.1. Let me do that really quickly for you. And then we will go into Canvas, okay? Um, we still have a week until we're turning this in, so it's going to be okay. Um, but we're just going to have to work this week. Okay, here is the link to the research summary. Okay, so when you're in Canvas, go to modules. If you are sticking with me because you are lost about this class, which is Kijana and maybe Megan and I'm not sure who else. Okay, let's look at the modules page. Okay, we have got on our modules page everything we've done in class. So let's talk about where we started. The first thing we started was with orientation and finding your Wi-Fi resources. Okay, we, you were supposed to complete orientation for UT. If you did not get this done, it is too late. UT has cut off orientation. You cannot do it anymore. Um, and then we had, where's my Wi-Fi? And that was to help you think through what you would do if your Wi-Fi was down or you didn't have um, resources. You were to submit this. You can still do that and um, turn it in. Several students submitted a paper that was blank. Okay, so if that's you, you did it, but you submitted a paper that's blank, it says resubmit in focus, RS. You can email it to me directly or you can try and resubmit it again. That was the very first thing we did. Okay, the next thing we did when I am in modules is um, we talked about, or I had you guys kind of look at this stuff, and then we did the welcome knowledge check intro to Canvas, getting started with time management assistance. And this entire, the purpose of this was so you would learn how to use Canvas. So if part of the reason that you're lost is because you don't know how to use Canvas, come back and do this welcome knowledge check. It's a quiz format, but it will help you understand how to use Canvas. And you can't see that because I'm on a different page. Okay, there you go. Now you can see this, this welcome knowledge check intro to Canvas. Okay, it's a quiz and it helps you understand Canvas. You guys are with me so far? Okay, Kajana, are you on here? Yeah, okay, there you are. Okay, good, good. Okay, then the next thing we did I'm going to come back to modules. Modules is how I use the class. It is a table of contents. So we've done, those are the two things we did in Welcome. So that's gone. Now I'm in module one. We looked at what a controversy is. If you aren't sure what a controversy is, start here. Every page in here is something you can read that will tell you or give you information. It's like reading a textbook, okay? I take that information and I turn it into slides and that's what I lecture from, but all the information is there for you to read. So if you're lost, that's a good place to start. So we talked about what a controversy is. 
we looked at examples of stakeholder articles in 1.1.1, okay? So this was access and ability, and I asked you guys to pick one of these articles to work with for a week. Then the next thing we did is we talked about different types of um, controversies and stakeholders. So we did 1.1.2, what makes a public controversy, 1.1.3, who are the stakeholders, and 1.1.4, what makes a controversy recent. And we used our article that we picked in this first year topic research samples to do these discussion boards. So that's the next thing we did. So when we were done with that, we should have understood what a controversy is and what a stakeholder is. Then we skipped 1.1.5. We came down and we looked at summarizing a viewpoint. All right. And we said the way that you summarize a viewpoint is you identify the principal claim. What is the main thing the speaker is talking about? We talked about summarizing fairly and why that's important. Um, if you need to read this section, come and do it. We looked at what Governor Jeb Bush said when he said stuff happens about um, people using guns to hurt other people. And then we listened to a reporter who mischaracterized that quote. Um, just time out really quick. Regina, you start a Google Doc. There isn't a, a formal place to write. You're just going to start a Word doc or a Google doc, and you just start writing it, just like a paper. OK, so after summarizing fairly, um, I had you guys take a quiz just to make sure you understood fair and accurate summary. If you did not do well on that quiz, there's a, a makeup on Google Classroom that asks you what you learned about fair and accurate summaries that you can fill out. Some of you guys wrote that you learned that a fair and accurate summary has to have both sides. That is not what this talked about at all. This was not a both sides thing. This fair and accurate summary is taking someone's opinion and restating that opinion correctly right? Not taking some phrases out of context. So if you didn't score well on that, go back and read this section on fair and accurate summary, because that is what UT and I are expecting you to do in this research summary. Um, then we talked about play-by-play -play summaries and argument breakdown summaries. And these two right here are kind of the format for how you'll take the source and summarize it. The play-by-play -play summary goes point by point through the article. First, the speaker does this, then the speaker does this, then the speaker does this, and it takes you through their stakeholder viewpoint entirely. The other one is argument breakdown. That one's a little harder, but it says this is the principal claim. This is the reasons that support that principal claim. This is the evidence that supports the reasons that support the principal claim. So we practice doing that. Are you guys with me so far? So this is where you would go to figure out how to summarize your article, the article you've picked that you're going to submit to UT. How do you summarize that? Well, come right here to 1.2.4 or 1.2.5. and these tell you exactly how to do that. If you'll read this section, it tells you what to do. And if you go into the play-by-play -play discussion forum, it's got a template you can use. For a printable worksheet, click here. It tells you exactly how to do that. So use this. Use this for your research summary. OK. After we practiced summarizing an article, we looked at what one of these looks like. So we did 1.2.6. When we pulled this up, we got to see what a student's actual research summary looked like. And then you guys practiced grading it. How would it score in the rubric? So if you want to see it again, you click read the research summary here in the instructions and 
if I click that, it'll pull up and it'll show you a student sample from 2015, I think. Okay, and you can use that to help write yours, to, to get an idea of what this is supposed to look like. Okay, then the next thing we did was we talked about, okay, how do I quote from the source? What do I do? Well, you have to contextualize, you can paraphrase, or you can quote. So we went through all of these things and there was a small quiz on each of them and there was an activity you had to do with each of them, okay? You had to do the discussion board for 1.3.1 and you had to do the discussion board for 1.3.3. There was a separate assignment on Google Classroom for paraphrasing the quiz. The last thing we did was our last class where you guys looked at documenting the sources. And you had your own source and I asked you guys to create an M, uh, uh, works cited for that source. And the works cited for that source would be formatted a certain way and would have a certain information in it. And I asked you to submit that to me on Google Classroom so that I can look at that and make sure it's correct so when we submit it to UT, you'll get full credit. So that's everything we've done so far. And every one of those things were baby steps in working toward this. If you did the discussion boards for paraphrasing, contextualizing, quoting, if you did those things, you already have quotes you can use in your formal research summary because you should have used your article on that. So you can just copy and paste those from the discussion board right into your formal research summary article. Okay. Who has got questions? All right. One more thing I have to say then. So before I was a teacher, I was a newspaper reporter. And I'll tell you the hardest thing about writing is getting started, okay? So just start, <laughs> just start. Pull up the template and start there. Give me a couple sentences about the author and start there. I promise, as somebody who wrote professionally for 10 years, I promise we can take whatever you write and make it better but we cannot take nothing and make it better. You have to write something, okay? Just write. Okay, Lanaya, I'm gonna walk you through work cited, okay? Um, Eli, there is, if you will look at 1.2.6, which is the student example, I think it's about a page and a half single spaced. There's not a word count. If you look at the instructions, there's not a word count, but it has to thoroughly summarize your source, thoroughly summarize it. So it's gonna be quite a few words. Emily, you do one article, period. One stakeholder, period, if that's what you're asking. Um, the other thing, yeah, no, so you just do it on one of them. You pick the one, you want you think you'll will be easier for you and you do that one okay i had you submit two one to do one is a backup so if they're both approved you pick the one that you want to do and you do it okay so lanaya let's go over work cited give me one second to pull up that okay Yes, Abigail, you can do play-by-play -play just more thoroughly. Okay, the next question was, how do I know if it's an opinion article? Timothy, if I have approved it and you got 100, it's an opinion article. That is why I had you submit it. If not, stick with me. We're going to find one for you, okay? <laughs> okay, um, so Lanaya, let me do work cited with you really quickly. Okay, so we want day six. 
Okay, so these slides, Lanaya, are up in Google Classroom. Um, but let's go ahead and go through them. Okay, so we talked about why you want to document. And we talked about the purpose of it, and that's because UT is expecting it. This is how you document. Let me make sure I've got your question right. You want to know... Okay, for the work cited. Okay, so in this slide deck, which you have access to, it's got examples of how to quote or cite within the text, which is this, um, the last name and then the paragraph number. Okay, this is what the work cited. Okay, it looks like Lanaya centered. Then underneath it, you have Colin, you have the author's name, last name, comma, first name, period. In quotation marks, you have the title of the article with the period. In italics, you have the container, which is where that article appeared. If it's a newspaper, it's the name of the newspaper. If it's a magazine, it's the name of the magazine. Then you have the date it was published, and then you have where you found it, and that was on the web. If you look at our Google Classroom, and you click Works Cited, you will see a bunch of information on how to do it, okay? Here, this Google Doc right here, Works Cited, is where you create your Works Cited. How do you create it? You've got an online resource right here, links right to Purdue Owl, which will tell you how to do it. And you have three documents that talk to you about how to create a Works Cited. The one I like to use the most is this third one. It's called 8th Edition Works Cited 2020. And here's what it gives me. It gives me the construction for my citations. It tells me exactly how to do it. So I would fill in this side of it. And actually, if you can see me, I would just write it on my notebook. Who's the author? What's the title of the source? Where was it published? If it's got stuff like volume issue number, it goes there. When was it published? What pages is it on? All of that stuff. Okay. And then I take this information and I put it in the same order right up here. All right. That's how I write it. First, I write down all the information and then I take that information and it's like Lego blocks. I just plug those Lego blocks in right in the same order. And if you look here, it tells you what punctuation to use. After the author, use a period. After the title of the source, use a period. After the title of the container, use a comma. So it walks you through exactly how these Lego blocks are supposed to look, okay? So that's what I would use. Now remember, this is practice. You're doing this right now and turning it into me so that we can check it and we'll have a week to make this perfect before we submit it to UT. But again, if you do not do it now, we don't have that time to check it and improve it. So you must do it now. You must plan on turning it into me this Friday so that we've got enough time to check it and get you that solid first grade with UT. Okay, I know Timothy needs help getting a source, um, but let me ask while I'm pulling up that information for Timothy, does anybody have any questions? Okay, Timothy, stick with me. Okay, if you feel like you are good, go and write, okay? If you feel like you still need help with your source or you've got questions, stay on. I'm going to start with Timothy and then we will move on. Okay, so Timothy. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you cut up just a little. Say it one more time, Megan. Do you have the exact module number of the sample paper we did so we can use it as a model? Yes. Okay, so here, look at this very last page that's up on your screen. The student example was 1.2.6. And if you forget any of that, again, this is on the slides, which are in Google Classroom. It's um, 
on-ramps rhetoric unit one day seven. It's the most recent slides.